Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and to another video. Today we are going to have an overview of Systemd. Now I know there are a lot of opinions about Systemd, but like it or not, it's actually included in the major distributions and it's a very important tool, especially for system administrators to manage their systems. So in this video, I'm just going to give you an overview of Systemd and the Systemd units and how you can manage them and edit them. Before we get started though, let me remind you, if you click the join button under the video, you will be able to become a member of the channel that will support my work a lot. So enough talking, let's jump into the video. So here I am on the desktop of Debian 11. I'm still testing it here on my main machine. And as I said in the intro in this video, we are going to have an overview of Systemd. Now, Systemd is the process that manages everything in Linux once the Linux kernel is started. Now, I know that there are a lot of opinions about Systemd out there, but I'm not going to go here into the philosophical meaning of Systemd. It's a system which has been implemented by the major distributions already years ago. And if you are a system administrator, you will have to deal with it whether you like it or not. So this video is just going to be about practical use of Systemd. And of course, there are distributions also who are not using Systemd. If you choose not to use that, you can go also with another distro. That's not an issue. Anyway, here I open up a terminal on Debian. So let me go full screen and increase the font size so that you can see better. Now, Systemd, as I said, is the process that manages everything in Linux once the Linux kernel started. And the command with which we control Systemd, the interface with which we control Systemd, it's systemctl. You might have seen already this command many times, but this is basically the interface for Systemd that we can use here on the terminal. Now, Systemd is composed by several units. Now, what kind of units we have in Systemd, you can always find out with systemctl-t for type and then help and then hit enter. So you can see here we have available unit types. So we have services, we have mounts, swap, sockets, targets, device, auto mount, and so on. You might have seen already these, for example, service. If you have a service like, for example, network manager dot service, that is the service managing network manager. We have also mounts, sockets. The sockets are, for example, ports where systemd is listening to. And we have also targets, for example, the multi-user target in the system. If you would define that in the system, it would boot up on the terminal directly. We have also device, auto mount and many others. Now, let me clean up the terminal and type in the next command. So the next command is going to show you basically the systemd unit files in the system. So we can use this by typing in systemctl list dash unit dash files and hit enter. So here you see basically the systemd files in your system. You can see we have here some of these are disabled, some of these are static, some of these are enabled, like for example, this acpid.path service and so on. So you can scroll down here with the down arrow and you can scroll also with the right arrow here because you can see more parameters. Let me decrease the font size here so that you can see everything better. And if you scroll down here at the end of the lines, you will see also how many services you have in your system. Now, in this default installation of Debian 11, you can see we have a lot of services. We have 334 unit files listed. So let's get out of here by hitting Q and cleaning up the terminal. Another command that we can use is systemctl list dash units and hit enter. So here you will see a list of units running in your system. And again, you can scroll down here and also move to the right if you want to see more information about it. I will go actually a little bit smaller with the fonts here. And you can see again, as I said, the units running in your system. And as you can see right now, we have 168 loaded units in the system. So let's clean this up again. And let's go ahead and install a service that we want to enable with systemd. So let's install one service that we can enable and manage here with systemd in Debian in this case. So I'm going to type in sudo apt install and I'm going to install the Apache 2 server. So I'm going to type in Apache 2. Now, if you're using another distribution like Arch, for example, or RHEL or CentOS, the package is going to be HTTPD. And that's the difference between the distributions. So I'm just going to hit enter here and authenticate with my password. And it's going to install Apache 2. And the package is now installed. 
So let's go ahead and clean up the terminal and type in systemctl status Apache 2. So you can see here, for example, we have some information. So we can see, for example, so we can see here, for example, some information. We can see Apache2.service. This is the name of the service that systemd is using. It's loaded in the system, but it's not active. And you can see where the file is residing in our system. It's under lib systemd system. Now, the location is going to vary also depending on your distribution. I believe in rel it's user lib systemd system. And we have also enabled. Enable means basically the system will be running when we reboot the machine and the vendor preset is exactly the same. So this is basically coming out once we install the package. Now the drop in line, it's telling you where you can actually create customized configuration files for this system. So the best practice is never to edit this file because these are actually managed files. So when you have an update to the package, if you made some customizations here, they will be lost. So it's always best practice to make customization files under Etsy system D system. And in this case, it's going to be done here under this directory. I'm going to show you this afterwards. Now, as we've seen before, it's inactive or dead and the documentation is under this link. So to start this system, we can type in sudo systemctl start Apache 2 and hit enter. Now let's have a look if Apache 2 is running. Let's move here to one browser and let's type in here localhost and hit enter. And you can see we have here our Apache 2 Debian default page. So the web server is up and running. So let's go back to the terminal here and run again the status command by pulling up the last two commands here. And now we can see a little bit more information. So we see that it's now active, so it's running since 31 seconds right now. We have also here the main PID or the process ID of Apache 2 in my system. We have the tasks number here and we have also the memory usage. And we have also here some information about C groups. Now, if you want to stop the system, you can, of course, always type in sudo systemctl stop Apache 2 and hit enter. And if we try to reload here our web server, it's going to basically fail. The site cannot be reached because we disabled the web server. Now, let me clean up the terminal. Now, if you need to edit one service in your system, the best way to do this is to use the systemctl edit command. So let me type in sudo systemctl edit and then apache2 and then hit enter so depending on your installation here you will be opening up this probably in vim or nano like in this case or any other editor but the most important information that you can see on the top of the window here is that you are actually creating an override to the system file the system file is under lib system this system as it says also here but this override basically will make sure that what you will put in here will not be overridden when you will upgrade apache 2 in this case and as you can see in this case probably in your distribution might look a little different or you might not have anything in here but in Debian, at least, it says anything between here and the comment below, which is this one right here, it's going to basically create new contents for the file. So which parameters can we use actually to edit these systems? So let me exit here for a second and I'm just going to save the thing here. And let me type in systemctl show Apache 2. So the show command is basically going to show you which parameters you can use with this service. So here you can see we have a long list of parameters that we can use. For example, you can see we have type right now by default is equal forking, restart, notify access, restart USEC and so on. So you also can consult demand pages for these parameters to see exactly what they do. But I just want to give you an example on how you can edit this specific service. So let me type in again sudo systemctl edit Apache 2 and hit enter. Now again here we are using the override.com file which is going to be created under Etsy systemd system Apache 2 service D. So in this way when the package will be upgraded my customizations here will not be lost. So let's say that we want to change the service here with some parameters. So I'm just going to enter here the service block because I want to change some things in the service itself. And the first thing I want to do is to say, okay, I want to actually have Apache 2 restarting always when something happens. So I'm going to type in restart equal 
always. And I want to also use restart sec. So I just want to define after how many seconds Apache 2 should restart once something happens. So I'm just going to say here 10 seconds. And then I'm going to save this file with Control O and Enter and Control X to exit the editor. Now, for these changes to take effect, we need to reload the systemd daemon. So to do this, we need to type in sudo systemctl daemon dash reload and then hit enter. And now if I use again the show command that I used before, you will see we have these two parameters here. It's changed to restart always and restart usec 10s. Usec or sec, it's actually the same. Usec is actually meant in milliseconds, but it can be also translated in seconds directly from here. Now let's start our service again by typing in sudo systemctl start Apache 2. And let's check this in our browser one more time, just to make sure that the web server is up and running. And you can see it is. So let's go back to the terminal. And let's say something happens in our system that an Apache 2 is going down. We are going to do this manually right now by typing in sudo kill all Apache 2 and hit enter. So let's see what happens. System CTL status Apache 2. And you can see here it says it's activating. And that's because we said that we want to actually restart. It's auto restarting here, Apache 2, but we gave it a time of 10 seconds. And once I entered the command, it was not yet done. So if I would actually retype it now, you can see it's up and running and it's now 16 seconds. That's why we passed the 10 seconds threshold and Apache was restarted. So this is a very simple example on how you can manage services here in systemd. And as I said before, definitely explore other parameters with the man pages to have a look what these parameters do. And never forget to put your personal configuration files under Etsy systemd system and never under lib systemd system or user lib systemd system if you are on another distribution because the changes that you will do to this system will be gone once you upgrade the system or the package whereas changes that have been done on the Etsy system the system will be kept in place so this was an overview of systemd and I showed you here how you can install manage your services and also edit them this is just scratching the surface there is much more to systemd and I'm going to cover this a little bit more in the future but for now this should be enough to get you started if you have any question about it let me know in the comments below and also I remind you again if you click the join button under the video you will be able to become a member of the channel that will help my work a lot and I'm very thankful for that Thank you so much for watching the video guys, I'll see you very soon in the next one.